I think we're not under the law. I think that we're not even desired by God to obey the law. And I'm going to make my... I absolutely agree that we are not under the law. But what does that actually mean? Well, it doesn't mean that God doesn't want us to keep the law, which is the clearest expression of his will for mankind that has ever been given. And yes, it was given specifically to Israel as a blessing. And yeah, the temple existed within Israel. The, the priesthood was given to a tribe of Israel, Levi. But God wanted the temple to become a house of prayer for all nations. And anyone would have to be ritually pure to go within the temple courts. I know I'm getting ahead of myself, but right there you have the law applying to the nations. And we'll get into this point by point soon. Talk about the requirement of obedience to God's commandments, and you may hear people start barking Romans 6.14 at you. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. But what does it mean to be under grace? Well, first let's answer what it means to be under law. If you're under the law, then that means that you're obligated to perform it. You're subjected to its requirement of perfection, which is condemnation because all have sinned and the wages of sin is death. So being under grace means that you're obligated to serve its requirements, which is still obedience to the commandments of God. But the righteousness of Christ covers our repented shortcomings. Furthermore, grace sets us free by giving us the power to perform while the law could only tell us what to do. When you're under grace, you'll stop sinning the same old sins because they no longer have dominion over you if you're born again a new creature in Christ. So the evidence you're under grace is conquering known sins by obedience to all the Ten Commandments. In this video, we're gonna talk about a subject has been making people going crazy. Uh, I've been noticing the last few days, my videos, the last uh, few videos I, I did, probably like three, four weeks ago, that people that are picking steam and people are not commenting and, and now there's some, a lot of those people are getting angry because what I said in those videos. And what they were getting mad at me about was the subject about, oh, we're not under the law, we're under grace. You're trying to put us underneath works and trying to make us keep the law and all that stuff. You know we're only saved by grace. And let me tell you something right now. We are only saved by grace, by the grace of Jesus Christ that died on the cross for our sins, that justified us, that redeemed us. He saved us from death and destruction. He's the only way that we are saved, that is correct, but that does not give us the right to sin against God and, and slap him in the face and say, hey Jesus, we know you died on the cross, we can do whatever we want now. That's crazy. The Bible does not preach that doctrine of demons and whoever's teaching you saying, we don't need to, to, to keep the commandments because we're underneath grace, they're lying to you and they're on, underneath some demonic influences. I'm saying that right now. The Bible does not teach that at all because today we're going to go in the scripture and we're going to see what it says for itself don't come to me saying rich i disagree if you're disagreeing with the word then that's your problem buddy not mine so i'm going to follow what jesus says not follow your emotions not follow your issues which you have with yourself it's not my fault that you don't want you don't want to keep what god told you to keep it's not my fault it's not my fault at all and you people saying oh rich we're not under the law we're saved by grace check this out Ro romans 6 verse 1 what shall we say then shall we continue in sin that grace may abound no verse 2 god forbid how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein verse 3 know ye not that so many of us as were baptized in jesus christ were baptized in his death Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism in, into death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the, in the, also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, verse 6, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we shall not serve sin. Verse 7, for he that is dead is free from sin. Verse 8, now if we be dead in Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Verse, I'm going to skip down to 14 and 15, for sin is 
shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. But here we go. What then? What then? Shall we sin because we're not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. You don't have a right to keep sinning because Jesus died on the cross for us to save us from destruction, to save us from our own demise. You don't have a right to keep sinning against God. So anybody that's preaching that we're just saved by grace only, and just saved by grace, and we don't have to, and we're just saved by grace, and we don't have to keep the law of God, we don't have to abide by his principles, you're not gonna go to heaven. You're not gonna be there. And I'm gonna prove to you today, because I got more verses for you. Verse 12, wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. Uh, what, what Verse 13, was then that which good made death unto me, God forbid, but sin that it might appear sin, a working death in me by which is good that that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful for we know the law is spiritual but i am carnal sold and eve sin and then we're going to skip down to verse 22 for i delight in the law of god man verse 23 but i see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me in captivity to the law of sin which is in my members Verse 24, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of death? Verse 25, which wraps all together. I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Oh, then with the mind, my I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Oh, Peter is talking about that the law is spiritual, is just pure, and I'm warring with myself inside because it's the law of sin that's warring with my mind, that's a virus that's causing me not to do good. But by Jesus Christ dying on the cross, he has been able to set me free from sin. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, I can stop sinning. And many Christians today are lying to themselves when they're saying that they cannot stop, they cannot keep the commandments of God because they're denying the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Rich, we can't keep those commandments. Then you're not part of the whole, you're not a new creature, a new Christ then. If you will be willfully want to sin, that go ahead. Broad is the way that leads to destruction, but narrow is the gate that leads to eternal life. You cannot have it both ways. You cannot have one foot in and one foot out. You cannot do that. As a Christian, if you're saying that we're just saved beneath grace, that we don't need to keep the law of God anymore, you are not keeping the word of God and you are not a true Christian. Because why? Because if you're saying willfully that I'm not gonna do that, what is good and you're denying the power of the Holy Spirit to change your life. The Bible says, shall we continue to walk in sin after it became dead to me? Should we walk into a newness of life? Yes, we will make mistakes. Yes, there will be some bumps on our journey, but that doesn't mean we should willfully try to break God's character and his law and try to do what we want to do. That's like if a police officer pulled me over for doing 90 miles per hour and I'm up here telling the officer, I'm so sorry, and he shows me grace and he doesn't write me a ticket. I'm thanking God because I'm like, man, I'm, I, he showed me grace. After he doesn't write me a ticket, does that mean I'm gonna speed off and, and do 90 miles per hour? No, we must obey God's word. And, and, and people are gonna say, well, Rich, uh, we're not saved by works we're say we're saved by faith only let's read Ch james chapter 2 and we're going to start with verse 10 james chapter 2 verse 10 for who shall ever keep the whole law yet offend one point is he is guilty of all verse 11 for he that says do not commit adultery says also do not kill nor now if if thou commit no adultery if thou kill thou art become a transgressor of the law oh verse 12 speak ye and so do as they that shall be judged by the law of liberty. Verse 13, for he shall have judgment without mercy that has shown no mercy and mercy rejoices against judgment. Verse 14, what does it profit? Pro, what does it profit my brethren? Though a man said he has faith and not works, can faith save him? Verse 15, if a brother or sister be naked, destitute of daily food. Verse 16, and one of you say unto them, 
depart in peace by you, by be warm and feel. Notwithstanding, you give them no, none of these things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? Verse 17, even so faith, if it has not worked, is dead being alone. Verse 18, yea, a man say thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without works and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou, thou believest there is one God. Thou does as well. The demons also believe and tremble. Uh, verse 20, but wilt thou, O vain man, that, that faith without works is dead? Was not our was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son as a sacrifice upon the altar? Seeing thou hast faith walk wrought with his works, by works with faith made perfect. And the scriptures was fulfilled which say which says, Abraham believeth in God. No, and the scriptures was fulfilled which says Abraham believed in God and was imputed unto him righteousness and he was called a friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified, not by faith only. Well, brothers and sisters, we cannot live the life of sin willfully. We cannot just say we're saved by grace and do what we want. You will not go to heaven and you live like that. There are so many pastors in these churches preaching that we are under grace. We don't need to keep the law. We don't need to do this no more. You tell that to Jesus when the day of judgment comes and you see what happens. Don't play with the word of God. Stop playing with the word of God and stop making all these emotional rants against me for going by the word of God. Stop it. The Bible is undefeated. The word of God is undefeated. He cannot lose. God cannot lie. It is undefeated. Stop coming to me in my comments talking about you're putting this in evil works. No, the Bible says faith without works is dead if your works is not backing up your faith your faith is gone stop playing with the word of god and then even jesus says i have not come to destroy the law but to fulfill it meaning to carry it out for not one jot or tittle shall be passed from the law until heaven and earth pass away if any man teaches teaches to break these commandments he will be called least in heaven but the one who, who teaches and doesn't shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus himself said, I have not come to destroy the Ten Commandments. So what did Jesus destroy on the cross? He destroyed Moses' law, which is a ceremonial law, which is not the law of God. It's two different laws. The law of God was put in the Ark of the Covenant. The law of Moses was put on the side of the covenant. So in the covenant was the Ten Commandments. The side of the Ark was the law of Moses for disobeying God. Daniel 9 and verses 10, 11, 13, 12, and 13. There, neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Yea, all of Israel have transgressed thy law by even departing, they might not obey thy voice. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us that the oath that was written in Moses law, the serving of God, because we have sinned against them. Daniel 9, 11, we're gonna continue reading this, states there's two separate laws. The law of God, because we have transgressed thy law, and the law of Moses, which is the oaths, the, the curses that were written in the law, if you didn't follow that. So there's two separate laws here. Stop mixing the two. One was done way of the cross that was pointing to Jesus. That was the point, of, we call them the ceremonial laws. The Ten Commandments is the moral law. The reason why people don't want the law of God to be abide no more is they don't want to keep the fourth commandment. That's why they don't have no problem with the other commandments, just the fourth one. Why? Because people want to live their own life the way they want to live it. They don't care what God has to say, but I'm going to live the way God told me to say. Don't bring up no Colossians 2.16 about, oh, one new moon, uh, don't judge one man judges one new moon uh, uh, you don't need to keep the Sabbaths whatever that is not talking about the Sabbath of the Lord thy God you read in Leviticus 23 verses 37 and verses 39 it says besides of the Lord besides the Sabbath of the Lord thy God these shall be Sabbaths to you which are the feast days the feast holy days these shall be a Sabbath to you there was distinctions the Lord the Sabbath of the Lord thy God 
and also the Sabbath, uh, I mean, the, the ceremonial Sabbaths, which are the Passover, uh, Pentecost. They're not the same thing. Stop mixing up scripture with scripture. Let's, let, let's, let scripture clarify itself. Stop making your own opinions and definitions. The only reason why there's a problem with the law of God because nobody wants to keep the fourth. Lord thy God, which is the Sabbath that God created, that he made him for himself and for us to worship it in. Two different definitions. And by the way, people disagree. We're going to be keeping the Sabbath in heaven. Just Isaiah 6, 6, verse 22 and 23. Oh, don't come at me because y'all don't want to keep it. It's y'all. And let me tell you something. If you offend one point in law, you are guilty by saying you don't want to keep it. You are willfully denying the law of God. Oh, if you don't want to keep it, that's your fault, not mine. I'm going to do what the Lord God told me to do. His Bible is clear. His word is everlasting. Don't come to me with these doctrines of demons because I'm not listening to none of you people. Don't come in my comments. Comment on me. We're not under the law. I just showed you. We're saved by grace, by Jesus Christ, by him dying on the cross, okay? We're only saved by him, what he did at the cross. But that does not give us the right to sin, for we should do the law of God and keep his commandments. Because why? Because one, we should walk in a newness of life, for sin is a transgression of the law, so we should stop sinning. Therefore, we should start following the law of God to the T. We don't have nine commandments, we have 10 commandments. Nobody told you that the Sabbath is done away with. You guys don't want to keep it. That's your problem with God. He made it be at creation before sin. You got to take that up with God. Don't get mad at me for keeping the one that was saying we're supposed to keep it. The Bible's backing me up. So don't come at me with verses because the Bible clearly says what it says and you're supposed to do what it says. Oh, so I don't want to hear it. We already know there's two laws. Law of Moses, it would never be hung. It was made out of stone. Moses' law was written on paper. It was written, remember, it says, Os, Os, the vow. If you didn't keep these, you were cursed. But what was done away with was the law of Moses, not the law of God. Oh, I just want to tell people, whoever's watching it and, and, and can see the truth, God bless you. I, got, I hope you guys see this and there are things like that. I'm, I'm, I'm Revelation 22 verses 14 says for those who ever the for the people that keep the commandments of God have the right to the tree of life I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna read this to uh, uh, verse 4 we're gonna start this for he spake in certain place of the seventh day on this wise and God did rest on the seventh day for all his works this is talking about God's rest Seeing, therefore it remaineth, some must enter therein. They whom it was first preached enter not because of enter not because of unbelief. Again, he limit a certain day, saying to David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, today, if you will hear my voice, harden not your hearts. The fourth commandment is still here. Not no, it's not done away with. The law of God's not done away with. The word of God clearly states the Sabbath day still remains. That's the only reason why you have a problem with the law. For if Jesus have given them a day, then would he have not afterwards have spoken another day? Therefore, remaineth a rest of the people of God. Notice in other new translations beside the King James, they changed the word Jesus to Joshua. Why would they do that? Because the Sabbath day remains. It remains. It, it remains. Wink, wink. It's not done away with. People are crazy if they're saying, you know, Colossians 2 verse, uh, 2 verse 16. Again, I already disproved that. It's not talking about that because God put it in here. So for those who heard the truth, God bless you. May, may God shine the light of God shine upon you. That's in Jesus name that God will bless you and keep you. And please like and share and subscribe this video. And thank you guys for watching. Peace.